You know, I don't know if you've ever had an opportunity to travel outside of the United States. I have. And um, in my travels over the years, I've been to places where, upon arrival, uh, I, I really, you know, kind of want to jump out of that airplane and kiss the ground. I'm just so thankful to be back in the good old U.S. of A. Uh, when we do travel and when we do get out of the country, we realize how much we take for granted here in this wonderful nation. You know, one of the reasons we are what we are here in the United States goes way back to colonial times. In the colonial pulpits, uh, before we became a nation, that's where many of the ideas that shape our government were developed, uh, defined, and refined. You see, so much of our founding documents are based upon the Word of God. And of course, that special birthright document, the Declaration of Independence, tells us right up front that we have been endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. Did you get that? Our rights don't come from the government. They come from our Creator. Now, I am concerned because I have heard a number of people say, I'm going to sit this election out. I'm concerned about both candidates, and uh, I just don't think I want to vote. Listen, I believe that our vote is a sacred stewardship before God. If, after all, our nation is founded upon godly precepts, and if we are a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, then we need to exercise our responsibility to vote. I think that's very important. Now, I'm not standing here before you this morning to tell you who to vote for, but I will tell you that I believe this election is the most important election in the history of our nation since Civil War times. You say, Pastor, how do I decide who I should vote for, given the candidates that are running. My recommendation would be to look at the platforms of the two parties that are represented by the candidates that are running. Now, if you're thinking, why is this minister talking about politics this morning? I want to say to you that we are dealing in this nation with moral issues that are very connected with the Word of God. They are spiritual issues, and we can't ignore these issues. Let me give you three of them. The first one that I would want you to consider, and I would want you to look at where the candidates stand on this particular issue is the sanctity of life. And I will tell you that the Democratic Party has a very progressive position on abortion. It is the most progressive position ever, more so than previous Democratic candidates, including Bill Clinton. Understand, that abortion is the taking of innocent, defenseless life. We are called to defend the defenseless. We are called to protect life. You know, here in the United States, abortion takes more lives than cancer and heart disease combined about 1.2 million abortions a year. Now, we have a gracious, merciful, forgiving God. And I understand there, there, there could be ladies here 
that have had an abortion. We thank God for the healing that takes place when we bring the trauma of that to the Lord. But I believe that it's something that we need with one voice as the people of God to stand against. Now, there's another issue that I think is very important. That issue is the sanctity of marriage. Again, the platform of the Democratic Party supports and advocates what they call same-sex marriage. Please understand that should this become the policy of the government of the United States, it is a violation of God's Word. And once again, this is a moral issue, a biblical issue, that we must take a biblical stand upon. You know, when we elect a chief executive, when we elect a president, we're not just electing a president. We are electing a representative that will bring in thousands of people that adheres to and advocates his philosophy, his position on the issues. That's why it's so important that we study the positions that these men have taken on these various issues. And they will come in and they will take over entire departments, the Department of Health and Human Services, And we know that that particular department has developed a health care plan that violates my freedom of religion, that uh, uses taxpayer dollars to pay for abortion. I, I, I am very disturbed by the fact that every day Planned Parenthood spends a million dollars that is taxpayer money. It's the biggest abortion provider in the United States. So we we have the sanctity of life issue. We have the sanctity of marriage issue. Uh, We have the fact that when we bring in a president, um, we are bringing in thousands and thousands of workers who represent their positions and their philosophy. And I think we should all remember and consider the fact that whoever is elected president of the United States will most likely choose at least two Supreme Court justices. That is a lifetime position. And they will rule on some of these great moral issues that face us today. A third issue is our support of Israel. What is the biblical position? The biblical position, and we've seen it in our recent studies of Genesis, God has given the land to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as an everlasting possession. Jerusalem is to be the capital of Israel. And uh, once again, The platforms of the two parties tell the tale. Some of you saw the news clip where there were political concerns that the platform of the Democratic Party did not mention God once. God had been excised from their political position. And so there was a request made to add God the word God to one of the sections of the platform so that at least God would be mentioned once. And uh, you might have seen that clip, how that uh, the moderator of the convention, the Democratic convention, uh, our Mayor Villaricosa from Los Angeles, um, asked for a voice vote. And there were two items they were trying to get in. One was the inclusion of the name God, and the other was... Uh, the mention that Jerusalem would be the capital 
of Israel. And um, Viragosa bravely said that these passed, but if you heard the voice vote, uh, it didn't pass. They said it did, but it didn't pass. And I, I mention that because um, the Democratic Party is way out there, way away in just about every issue that you can name uh, what would be the biblical position. Now, there are, it is estimated, 60 million Christians in the United States. Only 30 million vote in any given election. And I hope that you will not fall into that latter category. Uh, I hope that you are registered to vote. That is very easy to do. We can provide you with a form. You can get it here at the church. You can get it after the service. We have voter registration forms. You can go online and do it in just moments. We need to be registered to vote. And we need to vote. We need to pray for this election. There are Christians all over the United States who are fasting and praying. It's a crucial election. Now, our hope is not in the State House or the White House. Our hope is in Almighty God. But I do believe that we need to do our part. And certainly, the minimal is to pray and to vote. Maybe to tell our family and friends that aren't voting that we need to vote. We must vote. It's very possible that someday we may give an account for what we did with our vote in this election. So may God stir up and arouse the body of Christ. And may we take biblical positions on some of these great moral and spiritual issues of the day.